Hello everyone. Today in this video we are going to compare layer 2 and layer 3 switches. According to the OSI model, layer 2 switch works on the data link layer while layer 3 switch works on the network layer. Choosing the right switch for your network comes down to one critical decision. Should I use a layer 2 or layer 3 switch and which type is best suited for my business network. But before that we need to first understand the definition of OSI model and network switch. OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnection is a conceptual framework that divides network communication functions into seven layers. That means how data goes down the seven layers of OSI model on the sending device and then goes up the seven layers on the receiving device. Now a network switch is a crucial component of any network. So as an IT professional, you really need to understand the role of a switch in a properly functioning network. A network switch connects devices such as computers, printers, wireless access points in a network to each other and allows them to talk by exchanging data packets. Alright, I hope you got the basic idea, right? Now let's first talk about layer 2 switch. Layer 2 is the second layer of the OSI model which basically deals with MAC addresses. This layer's primary function is to provide reliable and error-free communication between two devices on a local area network. Now a layer 2 switch is a networking device operating at the OSI model's data link layer. Its purpose is to connect devices on the same network and forward data between them based on their MAC addresses. Layer 2 switches improve network performance by reducing broadcast traffic and providing dedicated bandwidth to hosts. A layer 2 switch works by checking the MAC addresses of incoming data packets and forwarding them to the appropriate port. When devices connect to the layer 2 switch, it stores the MAC addresses in its table. For example, let's say device 1 wants to send data to device 2. Device 1 will attach the MAC address of device 2 with its data packet and send it to the layer 2 switch. Now switch will check the destination MAC address in its table and determine which port matches the MAC address. And then it forwards the data packet to that port where device 2 is connected. It is also important to note that layer 2 switch creates a dedicated connection between two devices, reducing collision domains and enhancing network performance. A collision domain is an area of network where data packet collisions occur. For example, a collision can happen when two devices on a shared segment send a data packet at the same time. If the packets collide, both devices must resend their packets, reducing network efficiency. However, one downside of using layer 2 switches is that they lack routing capabilities. Layer 2 switches are the most common type of switches that are used in homes and small offices. Okay, now what is a layer 3 switch? Layer 3 is the third layer of the OSI model which is responsible for facilitating communication between different networks. The main difference between a layer 2 and layer 3 switch is the routing function. Each device on a network has a unique IP address that identifies it within its network and allows it to communicate with other devices. Okay, now a layer 3 switch operates at the OSI model's network layer which deals with IP addresses. These switches process and transmit data packets based on the IP address of the source and destination devices. Layer 3 switches, also known as multi-layer switches. That means they can perform all the functionalities of a layer 2 switch along with static and dynamic routing in layer 3. Meaning that layer 3 switch can operate on both layer 2 and layer 3 and forwards data packets based on IP addresses and MAC addresses. Let's take an example for a better understanding. Let's suppose you have an office and you want to isolate the network traffic from different sections so that IT department doesn't see any traffic from finance department and finance department doesn't see IT department traffic. This can be done by creating virtual local area networks or VLANs. VLANs divide a network into separate broadcast domains. So for the IT department, we create a VLAN and we give it this IP address and we call it VLAN1. 
then we create a vlan for finance department with a different ip address and we call it vlan 2 now because of vlans each department is on their own subnet group that's why devices in vlan 1 cannot see or communicate with the devices in vlan 2 now here is an important part of the topic you as an IT professional for some reason wants to allow communication between these two VLANs. So what happens in this case? This is where layer 3 switch comes into the play and does the job. Layer 3 switch allows the communication between two different VLANs. Router can also be used in this situation because router uses IP addresses to forward the data packets. But layer 3 switch is more suitable and does the job well. By setting up a layer 3 switch, it allows the communication between VLANs, which is known as inter-VLAN routing. And it does the job by creating SVIs, switch virtual interfaces on the layer 3 switch. These virtual interfaces allows information to be sent between VLANs by creating default gateways. So for instance, device A on VLAN 1 wants to talk with device B on VLAN 2. Device A sends data to the default gateway which is SVI assigned to VLAN 1 and then layer 3 switch checks its routing table and forward the data to VLAN 2's SVI and then to device B. So this is how basically layer 3 switch works. Pretty easy to understand. Ok now here are the major differences between layer 2 and layer 3 switches. Layer 2 switches work on data link layer of OSI model, while layer 3 switches work on network layer. Layer 2 switches send data based on MAC addresses, while layer 3 switches send data based on IP addresses and also MAC addresses. Layer 2 switches have a single broadcast domain, while layer 3 switches have multiple broadcast domains. Layer 2 switches cannot send data between VLANs but layer 3 switches can. Layer 2 switches are high speed, but layer 3 switches are slow. Layer 2 switches are cheap, while layer 3 switches are expensive. Layer 2 switches require little configuration, but layer 3 switches require complex configuration. Ok, so in conclusion, when it comes to choosing the right switch for your business, there are several factors that you need to consider. First and foremost, take a look at your network size and complexity. If you have a small network with only a few devices, then layer 2 switches may be sufficient. However, if you have a large network with multiple subnets and VLANs, then layer 3 switches might be more suitable. Alright, so with that, this brings me to the end of my topic. Thanks for watching this video on the comparison between layer 2 and layer 3 switches.